Hello everyone, welcome back to my workbench up here in the study at Donkitz Model Railway. Let's have a look at Trainomatic's Locomander 2 decoders. I have a few of their Locomander 2 mini 8 pin decoders from when I first started fitting DCC in my locos. At the time I had some models, specifically a Backman Class 08, that didn't have space for a Zimo MX600R. MX600Rs are rather long decoders compared to most 8 pin chips and don't always fit in small models. The Trainomatic decoders came highly recommended via another YouTube channel, so I bought a few. I had a lot of difficulty setting up ABC braking on them compared to the Zimo chip, including locos creeping and gapping themselves during the braking distance. I ended up giving up and transferring them to use as function decoders. Someone left me a comment recently about these decoders and what my experiences were. I decided to dig one out and film it. I don't have the Backman 08 I used to test it in last time, but sitting on the workbench at the time was this Backman 108. Totally fair test, right? Only one number difference? Ha! <laughs> Naturally, in this model the decoder didn't do any of the things I remember from before, and reading the two different sets of documentation I found, JMRI's config for these decoders isn't right, certainly not the old definitions I was using to try and set them up then, and not the latest definition that's available now either. Which is a much better definition, but it's still missing a lot of the ABC CVs, and is using a mixture of both sets of documentation. I clearly wasn't doing it right before anyway, so I need to do a ground up retest. There's some pretty good manufacturer provided documentation out there for these. Unfortunately there's two sets of it, an old set for decoder version 3.5.195 and an updated set for decoder version 5.10.306 and they use different ABC CVs. At some point Trainomatic rewrote how ABC works on these decoders and changed the CVs that are in use. First step, find out which version I have. 3.5.233 Yay, neither! I tried to configure it like the original documentation and did not get constant distance ABC braking. It did stop, but getting repeated stopping at the same point was difficult even with identical entry speed. There was clearly no attempt to stop in a constant distance at different entry speeds. Configured like the new version didn't really improve things much. It still suffered from inconsistent stopping with the same entry speed and stopping position was still highly variable with entry speed. I contacted Trainomatic trying to understand what I had, which at the time I suspected to be a third in-between configuration that needed yet another different set of CVs, and got a series of extensive and very helpful replies from Georgi. Top marks for customer service, and sorry if I've butchered your name. Ultimately, the conclusion was these decoders were running a very early version of the new ABC code and should have worked with the CVs I had tried, but that the firmware was not working as intended. The decoders needed updating. Firmware updates can be done at home with the Trainomatic programmer, which naturally I don't have. I contacted the retailer I'd bought the decoders from, and Sven from Tramfabrique offered to update them for me for just the cost of postage or he'd even drop that if combined with an order. Again, top marks for customer service. Remember, this is years after I've bought these decoders. I dug them out of all the models they were in and sent them off. I'd expected they'd be gone for a couple of weeks maybe, but they were back about three or four days later, already updated with firmware version 6.11.316, along with the new function-only decoders I'd ordered. I put one straight back in the same test class 108, Instantly it was clear that these are now a very different decoder, much improved from the firmware I had previously. It would not have been a fair or representative test to review the old firmware. No one will be getting decoders with that now. And if you do have old Trainomatic decoders, I thoroughly recommend getting them updated. If you have just a few, removing them and sending them back for updating works. If you have a lot to do, consider getting yourself the programmer. It isn't that expensive, and from reading the documentation I believe that updates could be done with the decoder still installed in the model. That may be a significant factor in your decision if you've installed a lot of these. With the new firmware I was able to achieve consistent stopping at the same location with the same entry speed. It was also clearly doing better with constant distance braking, with variable entry speeds. Not 
not to the same precision that Zimo is capable of achieving, but it's also clearly better than what ESU have managed. Installing one in another, much older production Backman 108, the performance was close on identical settings, and with only minor tweaks I could get it almost identical. If you are enjoying this video, or finding it useful, hit the like button. If you want to see more of my layout or the stock I run on it, hit the subscribe button. If you have a question, comment or suggestion, write it in the comment section below. I tried one in this Backman 101, using a 21 to 8 pin converter plug, which thankfully there was enough space for in this model. This required a few more settings changes, but again I could get it close enough in performance to run in multiple. I then tried this Backman Derby Lightweight, which is a bit more of a challenge. This model has given me trouble before. It has exhibited some inconsistency with ABC, sometimes failing to stop, sometimes stopping when it shouldn't. With extensive modification to the entrance and exit sensitivity, plus adjusting the timeouts, I've got it to mostly stop reliably now, but I'm still experiencing issues with it starting to creep after stopping. After a random period of time sitting in the ABC block, it will start to creep forwards. I have a suspicion this may be due to the lighting in this unit. I've experienced issues with direct wired lighting previously on Backman products. Check out this video here for more information. And this DMU has the interior lights wired directly to the pickups, just like that coach did. Most of the time it will wait many minutes to start creeping, but occasionally it will start doing it straight away. Naturally, Murphy's Law is in force here, and pointing a camera at it to catch specific behaviour guarantees alternative behaviour every time. So getting this on film was a bit of a challenge. I think the long term solution to the Derby Lightweight is to rewire the lights as functions on the decoder rather than straight to the pickups as they are now. Why on earth Backman didn't do that originally, when both cars have decoders in them anyway, and it isn't exactly high on function usage, I have no idea. While I'm at it, the interior lights are far too bright, and the headlights are far too blue. There's a lot wrong with the lighting functions on this model that will need changing to get it to fit in with the other first generation DMU models. Aside from this problematic unit, which has had issues on other decoders in the past, the other three units work quite well, and are pretty well matched performance wise. Certainly good enough I'd be able to run them in multiple without worrying about coupler issues. As to all the vehicles these decoders originally came out of, I've replaced them with other trainomatic decoders, specifically the FD micro function only decoders. I found that while using motor decoders, this is any motor decoder, not specifically these ones, as a function decoder does work, it comes with added problems. Unlike with a proper function decoder, the command station won't see the decoder on the programming track, so you'll need to put a loco on the track with the same decoder to program them. It used to be that function only decoders were rather expensive significantly more expensive than a normal decoder, but the FD Micro isn't. So what do I think about trainomatic decoders? They've certainly come a long way since I first bought them, and with current firmware, they're pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty good. Documentation is good, 
albeit I wish they'd link the current version of the documentation from the main website and not hide it in the firmware update download where most people aren't going to find it. Once you do find the documentation, there's a lot of configurability, but the Zimo feature of configurable overrun compensation is not present. And this means stopping accuracy cannot be tuned as well as it can with a Zimo chip. Nevertheless, even without these features, these do a significantly better job than ESU manage. And if I can't get Zimo decoders, these would be my number two choice. The JMRI definition for this decoder is out of date and does need an update. This is now for a JMRI contributor to do, as aside from linking the documentation in a better location, Trainomatic have done all they can be expected to do here. Aside from the problematic Derby Lightweight, which is going in the queue for an electrical rebuild, these decoders will remain in these units for now, as they are strictly better than every other non-Zimo decoder I have, and Zimo availability is still a challenge at this moment. Whether they stay permanently depends on future firmware updates. If the ABC performance continues to improve, particularly if a method of compensating for overrun at speed is introduced, they may become a decoder I'm happy to continue to use and buy more of. On the other hand, if Zimo fix their crippling availability issues, I may revert these units to Zimo decoders. I really like the FD Micro Function decoder though. This does exactly what it needs to with no fuss and they're really cheap to buy. I will certainly continue to fit these wherever I need a function only decoder. See you next time up here in the study at Dongit's Model Railway.